so eager to uh, to tell you about design and nature that I uh, they, I, won't, I almost preceded the uh, the introduction. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know the topic already, and um, uh, I begin by asking you to look around. Uh, you are surrounded by um, images, by uh, configurations, uh, patterns and the rhythms. In one word, by design, design being a noun, not a verb. And the design happens uh, when something is flowing, and at the same time that something is uh, free to morph, like the, uh, the channel of a river. Uh, this uh, phenomenon, design, uh, unites the animate with the inanimate, the uh, river delta with the human lung. This is a big thing. Uh, it makes design a, uh, a big um, a phenomenon, a uh, phenomenon of uh, all physics, not of a particular domain such as biology or uh, river morphology or uh, technology. And um, you can uh, see the principle behind this uh, phenomenon if you imagine the, uh, the birth and uh, life of a river basin. Imagine the rain falling uniformly on, uh, on the green area. In time, the flow uh, shows uh, you images which uh, succeed one another in a particular direction, in the direction of flowing more and more easily. Uh, this is the idea, or the principle. It is the uh, time direction in which the, uh, the tape of the evolutionary movie is actually running. And if you uh, invoke this idea, as we have, then it is possible to predict uh, in a very short time the um, constructual rule for all river basins, which is that uh, every channel um, should have, on an average, four tributaries. More um, uh, generally, the, uh, the, the principle uh, has become known as the constructal law. It states that for a um, flow system, in order to persist in time, and that means to live, it must uh, evolve in such a way that it provides uh, greater and greater access to its currents. This, uh, this is a uh, statement of physics, uh, one that defines what uh, life is, and, and it also defines the future as an uh, evolutionary design uh, that uh, becomes uh, better and better flowing uh, uh, over time. What about us? Well, we are no different than the water in the uh, river basin. We uh, morph in order to uh, move uh, our uh, mass more easily on the landscape. And I begin uh, with, um, with uh, uh, animal mass uh, flying, uh, not as uh, pretty pictures individual uh, animals from the zoology book, but, uh, but um, animal mass uh, making its way the easiest on the world map. It turns out that uh, the easiest, uh, meaning uh, the movement that requires uh, less and less food, happens when the effort to, uh, to lift the, uh, the body weight uh, away from the Earth, to place it at um, flying altitude, is the same or of the same order as the effort to uh, penetrate the environment, to get the environment out of the way in order for the body to uh, advance horizontally. In that regime, which is really a rhythm of uh, flapping the wings, uh, in that regime, the, uh, there's a particular speed for this uh, movement, and that speed V is proportional to the body mass raised to the power one-sixth. It is the uh, straight line uh, in the graph, and uh, with that line agree all the uh, things that fly, the insects, the birds, and uh, all of us, uh, the human and machine species. Uh, there is an important uh, aspect of this um, correlation um, and prediction. It is that the cloud of data is um, old at the low end and uh, young or very recent at the high end. It uh, takes us from the many and the slow and the small to the few, the large and the most recent. And this direction of time, which is actually the time arrow of the constructor law, uh, should be uh, visible and in your, should be present in your minds as you, as you look at four more drawings of this type that I will show you. The plot thickens because uh, what I showed you that works as a predictive idea for, uh, for uh, animal flight uh, works uh, just as easily for predicting uh, running 
and swimming. And uh, the uh, prediction is <laughs> basically familiar to everyone, that it is that larger animals uh, should travel faster, should uh, wave their bodies less frequently, should be stronger as weightlifters, and should uh, move mass to greater distances uh, over time. Uh, this happens to be just the beginning. Um, I uh, was happy to, uh, to use the same idea, to construct a law to solve a, um, a riddle, uh, a long, an old uh, puzzle in biology, which was why bigger animals uh, have uh, longer lifespans. I uh, show that, and also in addition, I show that there's not just lifespans, but uh, the bigger uh, things uh, travel uh, longer, longer distances during their, their lifetimes. Not just the animals, but all the things that move, uh, the atmospheric uh, and oceanic currents, the uh, river deltas and the river basins, and all of us, the trucks and, um, <laughs> and the truck drivers. Um, we can witness uh, animal evolution. Um, in these two examples, it's the evolution of a, um, a special group called uh, uh, the fastest athletes, 100-meter uh, sprint and 100-meter freestyle. Um, records go up, meaning speeds increase, but along the way, uh, the body masses of the winners uh, increase. And uh, the relationship between the two is the same solid line as the one discovered earlier for all animals, uh, runners and, uh, and swimmers. We can also uh, witness evolution in uh, our own movement on the landscape. Uh, we are moving, obviously, because we're being pushed. <laughs> Nothing is moving by itself. And in our case, the pushing comes from, uh, from engineering, from the discovery of, uh, of uh, the heat engine, today is responsible for the power plants that put power in all the outlets we take for granted. And uh, the evolution of, the, uh, of this uh, human and machine species uh, kind of animal is uh, suggested in the blue uh, circle. Um, fuel is burned. This uh, contrivance in the blue converts uh, the, the, the heat from the fuel partially into work, which is useful, and dumps the remainder into the ambient. All of uh, uh, the science of energy, which is uh, an engineering uh, discipline called thermodynamics, has been about uh, squeezing more work from every unit of fuel consumed. Um, with the constructor law, we ask a question that uh, has been overlooked. It is, uh, what has happened to the produced work? Uh, none of us is uh, storing uh, work or power in a uh, power bank. The produced work, which is shown here coming out of the blue uh, disk, is destroyed instantly in the process of moving something horizontally on the world map. Um, animals do it, we do it, uh, and the winds and the oceanic currents uh, do it. And so, uh, in, um, let's call it an in a partial summary for my talk, uh, fuel um, consumed means work, and work Dissipated means uh, mass moved to a distance. How do we move on the landscape? We move with design. We don't move uh, haphazardly by bumping into walls. Uh, the, uh, the Atlanta airport is the icon of uh, how we move. We move uh, uh, short and slow in combination with long and fast. The distance, uh, the dimension of, uh, of the area uh, shown on the left, is uh, shorter uh, when uh, the movement is slow. It is longer in the, uh, in the direction of the faster movement. And uh, this shape is uh, the best shape so that everybody on the area uh, goes from one point to another the fastest. Um, and the, that particular rule of, uh, of design, which is natural in fact, uh, is summarized by what you see on the, on the screen, uh, by the statement that uh, the time to go short and slow must be the same as the time to go long and fast. In Atlanta, it is, in Atlanta Airport, it's five minutes. It is um, an hour or two on a larger area, such as uh, uh, Europe. Uh, the long and fast are the air routes, the um, short and slow are the, um, 
the yellow uh, armpits uh, across which uh, you go uh, after you found your car. Um, you go from the airport uh, to the sea resort. I ask you to uh, contemplate an even larger scale, which is our movement on the globe. Uh, three things here. Uh, first, at the very bottom, the, uh, <laughs> the summary of the lesson learned so far, which is that uh, fuel means work, and work means uh, mass move to a distance. Uh, the world map is um, measurements of uh, the condensation trails behind all flying aircraft, uh, which means uh, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, how, uh, how uh, non-uniformly fuel is being burned. And non-uniformity non means hierarchy. In this global movement, all of us together, um, some regions are uh, moving more than other regions, uh, meaning that uh, the movement is hierarchical, and it is in fact aiding everybody to move all over the globe the easiest. Here is another way of uh, telling the same story of how we move on the, uh, on the planet. Uh, I plotted on the in horizontal direction the, uh, the fuel consumed per capita, and in the vertical direction the, uh, the uh, GDP, the gross domestic product per capita, were the wealth um, of the world. The dots are the countries uh, uh, on the planet, and uh, as you can see, they line up. Not only that, but they, uh, they, they race upward. Everybody and every uh, organization or group is trying to become uh, wealthier. And um, so this is one thing which speaks of uh, wealth uh, not as an intangible, but as, uh, as a concept in physics, because it comes from uh, fuel, work and movement. But it's also important to note that the cloud has a thickness. And on the, uh, on the upper side, you'll find the, uh, the movers uh, who, um, who um, reside in the uh, thick and busy channels in the Amazon of uh, movement on the planet. On the underbelly, you find the, um, the movers uh, uh, who uh, reside um, in uh, the peripheral channels. I show you uh, an additional uh, uh, representation of the same phenomenon of uh, hierarchical movement on the planet. Um, in, the in the vertical direction, we have uh, wealth. In the horizontal direction, we have economic freedom. The ranking according to, to uh, economic freedom, freedom increasing to your, uh, to your left. And uh, here uh, we see the cloud is even thinner. We see that the movement upward means an evolution of the design toward, um, toward greater freedom in, um, in history and uh, in the future. And this brings me to, um, to my um, um, summarizing, uh, um, let's call it a punchline. It is uh, first, it is first that, uh, that there are two kinds of, um, of um, countries or societies. Uh, in, uh, in the present, but also in the, uh, in the, in the past that we, uh, we learned about. Uh, they are the free, and they possess two important qualities, uh, wealth and staying power. The, uh, the uh, organizations that are rigid or difficult to change uh, possess the exact opposites, which are poverty and catastrophic change. And this is why, uh, at the very top of the screen, you'll see uh, uh, how to predict the future. The future belongs to, uh, to more and more channels that are uh, more open. It, me it belongs to, uh, okay, societies and other uh, institutions that uh, um, liberate our flows. The liberating is accomplished through uh, better and better education and technologies and also through uh, a rule of law and a government that is, uh, that is uh, free to change and open to the ideas of, uh, of being changed. Uh, this is the good news, and it is uh, physics, not opinion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>